Dr. Romano, can we dedicate this um, video to Rachel Marley and the University of Florida pre-dental students? I just got off the phone with her and we're donating some books to their raffle. One lucky kid will get our 2019 books. Sure, I love all the Florida kids. I have a lot of students from there and part of the study group as well. So come along, let's see what we got. Okay, Dr. Romano. I want to show you a very important question that you're likely to see on the exam. And surprisingly, most of my students here in New York never even heard of parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is a virgin birth. Normally, when you think of birth, you think of fertilization, you think of an egg and a sperm cell. But this is a form of, of asexual reproduction, where an egg develops without fertilization. As crazy as that sounds, without fertilization, we have an egg developing. Now, the progeny can be either N or 2N, depending on the mechanism. We don't need to get into the details of any mechanism, but I want you to understand that this virgin birth or asexual reproduction by parthenogenesis could occur in bees, ants, wasps, um, rotifers. Rotifers are microscopic aquatic animals. They're really cool looking if you get a chance to take a look at them. For example, as a concrete example, in a honeybee, the males are the drones, and they're fertile, they're fertile haploid adults that arose by parthenogenesis. Females, however, are diploid, as well as the queen. Now, besides bees and ants and wasps and rotifers, you might also catch, as crazy as this sounds, parthenogenesis in vertebrates. Recent research has shown I've seen a couple of species, about three species of hammerhead sharks also doing parthenogenesis. Komodo dragon also does parthenogenesis. And when they did experiments, when they were kept apart, the male and the female, guess what happened? You got it. There started being little babies produced. So as you can see, this offspring is produced by parthenogenesis. Um, the exact reason, if I were to take a shot at why, Possibly it's an adaptive strategy to ensure reproduction when conditions are not optimal for sexual reproduction. That's probably the best answer I can give you as to how this possibly could occur. Um, as a last side note, it could be induced chemically or it can be induced electrical stimulation. For example, if you took a frog egg and you pricked it by a needle, you can induce parthenogenesis. I hope this gives you a good idea for the dat, the MCAT, the oat. You just make sure you know that this is fertilization without an egg and a sperm. And I think you'd be set to go for the DAT exam and the oat and the MCAT. I hope this helps on something that's a little confusing to students and many of them. This is some kind of esoteric topic and it's very interesting. I'll see you next time and we'll do another video maybe on the mast and basophils. Thanks, Dr. Romano. I've seen a Komodo dragon before. Have you? All right. Good for you. Bye-bye. Okay, Dr. Romano. Good day to you, sir. Can't wait till our paths cross again. Does he ever have fun? Goodbye.